Welcome back to UMass Sports Weekly. Joining me at the table to talk UMass, UMass Athletics <laughs> is Mike Kondo and JMS, Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Guys, thanks for joining me. Started off talking the basketball team as they're you know in the midst of their season right now, playing good. But coming off a real lo- ro- uh, rough weekend, two losses, uh, one to Temple and a heartbreaker, 83 to 82. And one, in, one to VCU, that was a heartbreaker, but not in the same way. Uh, they lost, forget, final score slipped in my mind, but I know they were up by five at half, and then it was just, it was terrible from there on up. That was the game I remember. I remember the first half. They played good for the first half, but other than that, it was pretty bad. So they're tough losses for the team to take, especially in this tournament chase right now. Uh, so, Jesse, what can you tell me about these games and maybe outlooking on the rest of the season? Well, Casey, I think you've got a good strategy going uh, for getting the second half of that VCU game. Because that's what that game was. It was really just a tale of two halves. First half, UMass is shooting well. You know, VCU not struggling a little bit, but still keeping in it. And, you know, UMass goes into halftime with a five-point lead. They come out, and I guess somehow UMass forgot how to shoot the ball. And not only that, they forgot how to hold on to the ball. They turned it over 24 times, made no three-point shots out of seven attempts, shot like what 33 percent from regular field goals i mean that was just really pathetic second half for umass and they really got the score they deserved for that kind of performance frankly um as for the temple game like you said total heartbreaker you know i mean umass they did a good job coming back uh key three-pointer by freddie riley you know to bring him within one they get it back for the last possession and just can't pull it off they lose the ball scrambling until the last seconds you know it's just a real heartbreaker so i mean mm-hmm. uh going on up to the rest of the season you know they have some tough games coming up uh xavier butler dayton you know those could be some real challenges and considering they're only one game over 500 in uh conference record it's not a good place to be with a uh, tough uh home stretch coming for uh the team mike would you take from these games for the you know the remaining stretch of the season i'm gonna be honest I'm pretty disgusted with the way they played these last two games. Now, when you have a five-point lead and you come out in the second half and let the other team go on a 21-5 to run, that just screams to me that's a lack of effort. You did not come out ready to play. Shot 27% in the second half. Let me say that again. 27%. One more time. 27%. (laughs) I guess I was kind of generous saying 33. (laughs) Chaz Williams, six turnovers. That just can't happen to... To the Temple game, and their point guard, Khalif Watt, is an absolute stud. I mean, he's leading the A10 in scoring, mm-hmm. averaging 21, 20 and 4. I mean, he's a stud. He's about 6'4, 210 pounds. He's no scrub, but you can't let him score 17 points in the second half. Finish the game with uh, 24 points. That can't happen. And uh, Temple, they've won five consecutive one point games. They know how to win close games, but still, you, you got to grind it out. You can't turn the ball over. Their last possession, 17 seconds left in the game, and you don't get a shot up. You yeah. lose the ball. Chaz Williams got to take better care of the ball. Yeah, I think, I think that last possession was a good microcosm for that whole game. Just mm-hmm. complete and utter disappointment. You get the last shot, get the play set up, and you don't even get a shot off. It's just it's can't terrible. Happen. And those are, you know, those, are, those are two big losses for them to take. Before those two games, you know, there was a lot of talk of them possibly making it into the tournament this year, playing some good Damn. games. Needed some big wins, and after those losses, it's just it's not looking too good for them to make the tournament. Mm. But, you know, there's still the A-10 tournament. We can see what happens there. Um, moving on to hockey now. More disappointment coming from our UMass athletes. Uh, hockey was just recently swept in a home-a-home by our sisters, UMass Lowell. Um, Tough loss, uh, two tough losses actually. You know, you could use one of them. UMass Low has been hot lately, but uh, the Minutemen seem to find ways to beat those teams. So, Jesse, what would you take from these games? Well, they do find a way to beat some of those top teams every once in a while, but apparently not UMass Lowell. I mean, this isn't the first season that they, the first season in recent memory that UMass Lowell has swept uh, U, the Minutemen in the season series. And of course, we all remember that uh, painful first game we played against Lowell. Um, and yeah, and mm-hmm. the second one wasn't much better, a 60, uh, six to three final. And the thing is, you, the Minutemen outshot Lowell, you know, by a bunch, by a lot in that game. And they still came up with a very bad loss. I mean, you know, and this isn't the first time they've outshot opponents and still mm-hmm. ended up losing. You know, that says to me that, you know, UMass is not getting the best looks, um, you know, for the goal. And, you know, I know it's hockey and it's very fast paced, but I think it may be, 
uh, best for the Minutemen to you know, slow it down and find some better looks you know, if they're going to win games against uh, tough teams like UMass Lowell. Mike, what do you take from these games? You know, they've lost four or five. They're sitting at 10, 15, and two. They're really having a tough stretch right now. And, you know, the, but the, looking at forward, they have three upcoming home games, two against Maine, who we just tied, and uh, one against Northeastern, who we just beat 6-3. to three. So those are all winnable games to get us back closer to the 500 mark, and we've really got to capitalize at home. Now, Northeastern is coming off a Beanpot win, which is, you know, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty historic for that school. So that's going to be a tough game. What do you hope to see out of the Minutemen tonight against uh, Northeastern? Bottom line, got to go in there and get it done. There is no way around it. Got to get it done. Yep, coming off of two rough losses, it'd be a big game to be a big game to win. Definitely. What, what do you want to see out of the Minutemen tonight? Well, you know, like I said, you know, get some better looks at the net, you know, so they can get more opportunities. You know, um, you know, they did win six to three in that last game against Northeastern, but before that, lost one to nothing at home in a nail biter. So, you know, they just gotta, like you said, they gotta go out there and get it done. You know, they gotta get it done on the defensive side, more consistent goaltending, get it done on the offensive side. Just like you said, get it done. Uh, we're in the first period right now of that game, about a minute left, and it is currently nothing to nothing. So, you know, we still got an even game. It's early, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Um, so moving on, uh, moving on to a bright spot in our UMass Athletics. I got some hope Men's here, guys. Cross. We have wins. Um, first win was women's beat LIU Brooklyn this weekend, women's across, 21-8. to eight. That was That's a big a win. Um and maybe a little more meaningful uh, was the men's lacrosse win over number four UNC. Big upset, won 12 to 11, and that moved them into fifth on the AP poll. So, so right now, uh, that's a big win for them to uh, come over USC uh, this uh, UNC, excuse me, this weekend. Uh, Jesse, what can you tell me about these games? Well, I mean, you got you pretty much got it right in saying that the uh, men's win was a little more meaningful. I mean, the women's lacrosse, yeah, it's a W and it's good to have. But, I mean, they were playing against a team that was 1-15 and 15 last year. You know, I don't think anybody came in expecting there to be, you know, too much competition here. And, you know, the men and women, you know, took care of business. You know, they won 21-8 to eight towards the second half. In the second half, you know, they pretty much have a big enough lead to uh, bring in a bunch of subs. They had 12 different players score on that team. You know, that just tells you, you know, one, how, you know, much they could bring in off their bench, you know, how you know much they had this game and two which you know does show they do have some really good depth on that team and uh, as for the men's win over number four North Carolina you know two words Zach Oliveri 18 saves in that game you know didn't allow a single goal in the final period when UMass scored four goals to come back win the game 12 to 11 such a great performance mm -hmm. from him you know and if that's any indication, we're going to have to see some great stuff going forward from Zach Oliveri. Hopefully Definitely. we can. Would you take this game? Back to the women's. I mean, when you, when you have three different goalies come in the game and get saves, that just shows you're playing someone that you are far better than that. Mm -hmm. So back to the men's. <laughs> <laughs> Mooney and Smith at attack with three goals apiece, like you said, the 18 saves from Oliveri. And it's funny, we lost the faceoffs. The ground balls were about the same. And we had less shots on goal, but we still came out on top. That just shows the will to win says a lot about a team, and we clearly have that. We played great down the stretch of the game. We came out with the W. Big upset. Big win for UMass. It's good to see them get these wins after some tough losses. So it's good to see some bright spot in our UMass athletics. Hopefully we can pull out the win tonight against Northeastern, and that's soon to see. Jesse, Mike, thanks for joining me. Stay tuned. We'll be back to finish up with the roundup.